church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. We are still going through our mini series on prayer. And if you've been following along with us, you know that we are currently traveling. We are recording these sermons in advance and we are praying these in advance over the ministry that is going to take place on this eight day journey that we're going to be on. And I encourage you that as these go live and you see them, That you not only pray these over your life, but you declare them and pray this over our life, over the ministry, and over the people that we are ministering to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10 today. We're going to read through some verses, and then we're going to take some time. We're going to pray these. And I pray that this series teaches you how to pray, how to read and pray through the Word of God, how to declare truth over your life. Uh, We're only going to take just a moment to explain these things. And then we're really just going to pray through the truth. So, Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom revelation in the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hebrews chapter 10. Every And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost is also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Now if you know anything about this ministry, the name Blank Slate Ministries comes from Hebrews 10 verse 17. Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, that's very important because God never forgets sin. It's a very important detail. God never forgets anything, but God chooses to never remember it. Psalm uh, 100, I believe it's 113, 113 or 103. God says, as far as the east is from the west, I will remove your sin and iniquity from you. I'll send it away. I'm going to choose to never remember it. See, what is forgotten can be remembered. God doesn't forget sin. God chooses to not remember it. It's a very different thing. But the, the, the part I really want to get in today is this understanding of Jesus. But one man, after he offered one sacrifice, four sins, forever, sat down. There is no more offering for sin. No more offering for sin. Verse 18, no more. One man, his name is Jesus, offered sacrifice for sins forever. His body on the cross. There's no more offering for sins. It's a very important detail out of the word of God because so many people, when they make mistakes, when they fall into sin, when they get into compromise, many things in their life, what they think is, I will offer for my sin. What they mean is, I'm going to, pay my tithes. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to serve. And they try to think of anything that they can do as a sacrifice to pay for their own sin. And they get into this trap. They get into the the trap of the enemy, which is the trap of 
uh, frustrating grace, subjecting yourself back to the law. The law said if you made a mistake, you have to pay for your sin through a sacrifice. And a lot of people are trying to pay for their sins by their own sacrifices. But the Bible says that one man, his name is Jesus, offered one sacrifice, his body, for sin, for all sin, forever. Past, past present, and future sin was paid for at the cross when Jesus died. And this is very simple, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. When Jesus died, he died 2,000 years ago. You were not even born. You hadn't committed sin, yet your sin was already paid for. So the sin was paid for before you ever did it. The same way sin in the future is already paid for. The sacrifice for sins has already been paid for. There's no more offering for sin. So it's not about you paying for sin. It's resting in the fact that God has already paid for it and removed your sin and said, I will remember it no more. So it's not about living by the law. What can I do to pay for my sin? It's about living by grace, understanding the sacrifice of Jesus, receiving it freely, believing it, and then walking boldly to the throne of grace, receiving mercy from God, and then walking in that truth, knowing that my sin has been removed from me and God is not bringing it up again. He will remember it no more. So, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you that one man, by one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down. Father, we thank you that our sin is paid for. That there's no more offering for sin. Our sins are paid for by the cross and the body of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you remember our sin no more. Father, that you have taken all of our failure, all of our compromise, all of our sin, and send it as far as the east is from the west. Father, we thank you that we can approach the throne of grace boldly. Father, that we can come into your presence, Father, with boldness, with courage, with strength, knowing that our sin has been paid for. Father, that we were made perfect and righteous and holy by the blood of Jesus. So Father, let us walk in the truth of grace, what Jesus has done in our lives, to pay for our sins, to make us righteous before you. Father, we thank you that it was his sacrifice for all sins forever. And Father, we choose to live by grace, knowing that the sin has been paid for. Father, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment, and we will see you tomorrow as we continue to have our series on prayer. Have a great day. Let's sing it, church.